Mr. Trump, um, what is the Trump brand? What's it stand for? Well, John, I think more than anything else, it stands for quality. We do beautiful quality jobs, whether it's buildings like this one in Manhattan, Trump Tower, I have many buildings in Manhattan, or country clubs or golf clubs or office buildings. As an example, we have 40 Wall Street, a landmark building in downtown Manhattan, which is actually the tallest building in downtown Manhattan after the demise, sadly, of the World Trade Center. And it's just been, we've had a great time of it. We've done really quality work, and that's why we're successful. Why did you bring the Trump brand to Scotland? Well, my mother was born in Stornoway. She loved Scotland. She thought Scotland was the best. And she went back religiously every year during the summer and she'd take my sister, who's a federal judge, and they would go and they would just love it. And she could stay there all the time. She had great respect and love for the Queen. And it was very interesting. Every time I see the Queen, I like the Queen because my mother loved the Queen. My mother passed away. But I really wanted to do something great in Scotland if I was able to do it in honor of my mother. She was, her name was Mary McLeod. And I felt very strongly about doing something really good for my mother. Now, in the beginning, you met Alex Salmond here in Manhattan, uh, first time, yeah? I did, I met Alex Salmond at Manhattan, in Manhattan. He was uh, inviting us to a dinner, and we went to a dinner and spent hours with him, a long time. You talk about wind farms. We talked about many forms of energy, in particular wind farms, yes. So what was the conversation? Because um, there's a big dispute about this, as you know. Yeah. What did you tell Alex Salmond at that meeting? It's in a restaurant, a parable. Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. It's just it's just the siren. No, the just siren is intrusive, yeah? Yes. yes. Right. Just Sorry. Thank you. So we'll hold for the, yeah. the siren. They've got a, a job to do. But we'd like them to do it slightly more quietly. Okay, well, it'll go. It's a loud one. It's gone? No. Of course. Okay. Okay. It's slightly less than that. We should be good. good. Thank Fine. You. Yeah. Um, so, um, what happened at that restaurant meeting? Well, there were numerous people there, but Alex Salmond actually sat in a private table with myself, George Soriel, and a couple of other people that uh, we know. And we discussed a lot of things. We discussed Scotland, we discussed the beauty of Scotland, but we also discussed energy in different forms, including windmills. So your position then um, is that you, um, were, you wanted to go ahead with the golf course, you were pressing to go ahead with the golf course, but were you concerned about wind farms and did you say that to, uh, to Alex Salmon? Absolutely. No, I wanted to go ahead with a great course, but I've seen what the windmills, wind turbines, they're industrial, they're unattractive. I've seen what they've done to other places. Now, I must tell you, that was a number of years ago. Today, that technology is just obsolete, and it's gotten much worse in terms of people now know the kind of destructive abilities or capabilities that it has. So uh, I would say that I was very strongly opposed to it then, and now I'm vehemently opposed to it. But we discussed wind, we discussed wave technology, we discussed something that I think is great, hydro, that's where waters and dams and lakes, because they actually are beautiful as opposed to these horrible things, you know, interfering with beautiful environments and killing birds. So we discussed lots of different forms of energy. A wave technology was very interesting to me because it's underwater, it's the currents move the electricity, and uh, that was something that was actually very interesting to me, but we discussed that also. Did, um, because George Sorrell, I met a little bit earlier, your yes. lawyer, uh, uh, told us that Alex Salmon actually said, listen, don't worry about the wind farm, it's not going to impede in your property, it's not going to happen. Well, that's true, it was very important to me because I was going to spend a tremendous, and have spent, a tremendous amount of money building what I considered to be, and what had the potential to be, the greatest golf course anywhere in the world, which is great for tourism, and it's turned out to be a tremendous thing for Scotland. And what happened is, and I very specifically said, look, I don't want to be standing on the first tee looking into an industrial wind turbine if I'm going to be spending all this money. He said it would never happen. Are you sure about that? Oh, 100%. I mean, I, I, we discussed it, and he said it would not happen. I believe he denies that. I, I don't know what his attitude is. I mean, I can't speak for him. You'll have to ask him. Effectively, are you calling the First Minister of Scotland a lie? I'm, maybe he has a bad memory. That's very possible. But there's no doubt whatsoever that crucial meeting, it's in the fall of 2007, 
you discuss wind farms, you say, I don't like them, I don't want them near my property, and he says it's not going to happen. Well, I just go a step further. I discussed it with George Sorio, and I believe there was somebody else that was there also. This was a while ago, and they remember the conversation also. So you've got witnesses? Uh, George Sorio is there, yes. Do you trust Alex Hammond? Well, I'm very disappointed in him. I think that he's doing a tremendous disservice to Scotland. I think when you see what's going on with Scotland, where they want to build 12,000 of these monstrosities all over the most beautiful countryside in the world. I'm there in honor of my mother, but I'm also there because Scotland is known for the most beautiful country. I mean, it's magnificent. You're going to destroy Scotland. He will destroy the wind turbines. These industrial wind turbines will destroy Scotland. But there was a time when you were great mates. I mean, uh, there was a, for example, what happened was the local authority blocked your plan. You complained to Alex Hammond, and then the, the, the government of Scotland um, unblocked your plan. I think so great, you were great mate, mates. I think great mate is a, a very strong statement. I knew him. Uh, I got along fine with him. Uh, but we were very disappointed in him because if you remember, when it was blocked, two of his people voted against it. These are people that he should have spoken to and probably didn't. But two of his people voted against us, which was totally unexpected. So instead of having the approval years before, we then had to stick to it and get the approval years later. But it's a very well-known fact that it was two of his people that voted against the initial plan, which was basically the same plan. Because of that negative vote and those negative two votes, we lost by a margin of like one and we had to go through a whole process which took a number of years. So when you say great mates, I mean, I don't think that's great mates, but we certainly had a, a, a decent relationship. You had a decent relationship, yes. and certainly he spoke out in favor of the plan, and he, you know, you liked him. You, you, you said, I believe, to open your course, you wanted to see Sean Connery and Alex Salmon yeah. um, be the first people to see off. Yeah. Yeah. Before this happened, and before the Al Megrahi situation, the terrorist happened, I would say that I had a very good relationship with Alex Hammond. I didn't know him well, but he would call me, he would speak to me on the phone. I think I called him probably a couple of times over the years, but I certainly had a decent relationship with him, yes. Why did that relationship go sour? Well, I think the real problem with me, it just seems that when I was notified by him and his representatives that they wanted me to back this horrible plan for the terrorists who blew up the Pan Am flight over Lockerbie, Scotland, and approximately 250 people were killed, horribly killed. When I heard about this plan, I couldn't believe it because I, it wasn't a plan. It, by that time, they had already released him. And it was a worldwide disaster for Scotland. And there are still people that bring it up. They couldn't believe it. He killed these people. Terrorists blew up the plane. Everybody knew he did it. And they released him for humanitarian reasons. I thought it was terrible. Uh, I got a call, or one of my people got a call from the Samad office, wanting me to write a letter basically endorsing what he did. And I said, I can't do that. And then I said, send us the letter that you want us to write. If I can do it, I'll do it. But I mean, it just seems like, I thought it was the craziest thing I've ever heard when they released him for humanitarian reasons. Here's a man killed approximately 250 people. And what happened is they sent me a letter that they wanted me to put on my stationery, and I refused to do it. And after that happened, John, I would say that the relationship was definitely never the same. Um, have you got a copy of that letter? I do. Can you show it to me? As per your request. I do. It's right here. They wanted me to put this in. Uh, this is from the First Minister's office. Mr. Jeff Aberdeen. So it's from Jeff Aberdeen who I'm yes. guessing is his, who he says special advisor to the First Minister. And um, he wants you, you're a New Yorker, to say, however, I'm certain that the Scots issued this release for good re reasons. I'd like to hope that it might help to break the cycle of violence around the world and replace it with reciprocal gestures. In any event, this is the Al McGrathy decision to send him home to Libya. In any event, it won't sort my love affair with Scotland and the Scots. 
What did you think when you read this? I thought it was absolute madness. Number one, I thought it was totally crazy that he did it. He spoke to me and called me and was very strong in wanting me to sign that letter or something very similar. And I said, I just can't do it. I think it's crazy that you did it. I didn't know why he did it. Nobody to this day understands why he did it. He said he did it for humanitarian reasons. And I just felt that it was something I could not do under any circumstances. And I told him in the strongest of language, I can't do it. I just can't do it. I disagree with your decision. And not only that, and he did mention, he said he'll be dead in a week because he had cancer. He, he, he'll be dead in one week. And I remember him saying that. Well, he lived for a couple of years after that. And frankly, if they didn't have the revolution or whatever it was, he'd probably still be alive today. So it made Scotland look so foolish and even stupid, and it made him look so bad. And I will say this, when I refused to sign the letter that he asked me to sign, having to do with the terrorists and Lockerbie, my relationship with him, it was just never very good after that. Were you hurt when some people in Scotland turned against you? Well, John, you know, I maybe you could say that, and I certainly think we've done an incredible job. You know, we, we have here just, I brought this for you, but this is just a list of some people are saying the greatest course ever built, the great dunes of Scotland, they're magnificent. And as you know from speaking to Mr. Russo and other people, those dunes were in terrible shape. It was used as a dumping ground for cars and oil cans, and it was like, it was like, a, it was terrible, the condition of things. And now we're getting all of these rave reviews, people are pouring in. So, I would say this, I was more honored by the tremendous support that we've gotten, including all of the tremendous reviews that the course has got. I mean, some people are literally saying it is or will soon be the greatest course ever built, and that was an honor to me. We've had uh, polls taken where I was very popular in the polls, and people liked what I was doing. But you did say that you were going to bring 6,000 jobs to Scotland. Well, at some point, we'll bring a lot of jobs to Scotland, but I can't do it now if they're going to build the industrial turbines. Now, I will say that it took a big setback today because, as you know, Black Dog was just vehemently opposed, and their transfer station, is, it would be insane if they built it there. You could, have, you could blow up the whole town and, I mean, at a minimum, make people sick, and at, ma at a maximum, you could blow up the whole town. So this was their plan, to put this transfer station for this heavy electrical voltage in this area, and you have gases, and you have paper, and you have everything there. I think it's a crazy thing. So, as you know, the council today said you have to get an environmental impact statement. I did an environmental impact statement. It took me three years to get it done. And we were talking about putting down grass, not electrical wires. Well, Michael Forbes, you described his house as slum-like, disgusting. You said he lives like a pig. Was that wise? I probably wasn't wise. Uh, it was truthful. But it probably, I could have said it much more diplomatically. But the truth is that he would put signs outside of his house about Trump. And it, 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 his place is falling apart. He, he, it's very easy to maintain. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about cleanliness. I'm talking about a tractor that's been sitting there rotting for years, oil cans that are spewing oil into the ground. So could I have said it in a nicer way? I suppose so, but I'm a pretty honest person. I'd like to see it be nice. Uh, it doesn't affect the golf course, as you know. It's way off the golf course. Some people thought it would affect the golf course. It doesn't. But it would be nice to see the land maintained properly. Some of the people in the media state say that they've been bullied. Are you a bully? No, I'm not a bully at all. Uh, we want to make something great for Scotland, for myself, in honor of my mother. Sometimes you have to be strong. I mean, I could say, oh, gee, I'll leave this house, which is in ill repair, totally exposed, so that when you're teeing off, you're looking right into the backyard, as an example of Michael Forbes with the oil cans that are bursting out into his soil. But I can't do that. I want to make it great. I want to make it beautiful. When people come from Paris and the United States and all over the world to play, and they're standing there, and they're looking at a rusted, rotting house, that one coat of paint, all it is is a can of paint. I would fix it up for them. I would do that, gladly. But all it is is literally a can of paint. We're not talking about spending you know, millions of dollars. But 
when a person comes from other parts of the world, or even if they come from Aberdeen, because a tremendous number of our golfers come right from Scotland and Aberdeen, and you're staring down at the face of some of these very terrible sites, yes, I will put up trees, yes, I will build beautiful dunes, and I think anybody, any reasonable businessman would want to do that. And by the way, John, I hate to do this, but I do have that big group of people waiting, so I have to Okay, leave. now hold on, one last question, please, sir. I have to leave. Um, Thank you. The, um, I, I want to ask you about how you share the lawyer with Ray, um, with Pat Tony Salerno. Okay, all right then. Uh, sir, let me shake your hand. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're still on camera. <coughs> How you share the lawyer with Ray, um, with Pat Tony Salerno? Okay, all right then. So you share the lawyer with Ray, um, with Pat Tony Salerno?